Um, hello everybody, this is going to be a new series, um, it's called From the Bottle, uh, quick disclaimer, this is going to be some very, very sensitive content, please proceed with caution, and know that you are not alone in any of this, that being said I hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the first episode of From the Bottle. Today I'm being joined by Connor, who will do his intro literally after I finish this sentence. Hello! All you beautiful wolves and pups out there, welcome to the first episode of From the Bottle. And I'm being joined by Dom. Hello. So... And before we start... Dom, firstly, do your disclaimer, and then... Oh, no, I'm going to edit my disclaimer in. But, um, for those of you who ah. did see the disclaimer and are still watching, uh, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. We are not trying to talk, cause any malice by this, or yeah. try and be jokes basically, or dickheads guys, about any of this. In fact, yeah, that if we do laugh guys, at all, I will edit it out completely. Yeah. Basically, guys, this video will contain a lot of stuff that uh, most of you will... Trigger some bad reactions. Especially so, with me and Connor ourselves. A lot of yes. this is sensitive, and me and Connor, we usually don't agree with a lot of this stuff in general. But it's something that we think both thought is a really good idea to make something that's very serious, and we can voice our opinions in a calm, coordinated fashion instead of making jokes all the time. Exactly. And if any of you do suffer from things that will be mentioned in these stories, please. You are not alone. Get some help because if you don't, if you keep bottling it up, it'll only get worse. And once that bottle pops, there's no going back. Now right. with that out of the way, let's get started. Today's tale from the bottle is taken from Jacqueline Wilson's The Worry website. I... I think... Oh, this is useless. I could type in a thousand worries if I had to, but I can't find one unstupid enough to put it put in. I I do that. Make up words from somewhere. I make a lot of things up. Fantasy things. Like creatures and magical people, so I can disappear into my old world wherever I like. I don't need to disappear anywhere at home, though. I've got my mum. She's the best mum in the world. Sometimes I draw her with flowing black hair and piercing blue eyes, trapped in a tower, waiting wait for a prince to come and rescue her. <sighs> My mum is beautiful, and she's trapped, stuck in a flat with me and a wicked wizard who spends all our money on beer and cigarettes. Mm. The wicked wizard is my dad. We only see him at tea time in the morning now. He's out all night at the pub. My mum keeps saying that he'll change. But he never will. We all heard that story a million times. I remember when I was little, and we used to sit on their big bed and he used to read to me. My favourite was the Ugly Duckling. I can remember my mum reading the swan parts in a smooth, soft voice, and dad doing the Ugly Duckling, and the ducks parts in funny, high-pitched voices that made me giggle. I loved that room. It had a nice, musky smell. We had to move when I was seven because Dad got a new job. That's when he started changing. I, he was always late home, and then he went straight to bed. He stopped playing games with me and Mum. He didn't talk anymore. Only shouted. I missed my old school and my best friend Sarah. We used to be inseparable. Teachers would rush up to us before break times and ask us to keep the reception classes under control because we were 100% reliable. We kept them occupied by doing this little comedy routine. Their favourite was She's Behind You routine. Sarah stood in front and said, I wonder where Lisa could be. And I'd just run past behind her and pull funny faces. The class would all point and shout, She's Behind You, then I'd hide again. They loved that. When I came to my new school, I didn't fit in. Some of the girls tried to talk to me, but I wouldn't talk to them. I really wanted to make some friends, but whenever someone talked to me, I remembered Sarah. 
I felt guilty. The boys ignore me until we did football and PE. Girls we boys, and we won 6-3. I scored five goals. Then all the boys picked me for their footy team. They and reckoned I was dead sporty. They picked me for the other teams like rounders and basketball, but soon realised I couldn't hit the rounders ball with about the size of cat with with the bat the size of Croatia, and I couldn't score a basket if they paid me. Wait, does it actually say Croatia? No, it says Cal Calcutta. Ah. I could, but I was worried I would mispronounce it. Right, right, understood. Miss Bryn shouted at me a lot for being behind in class and not doing homework. I was glad to move up to Mr. Speed's class. Mr. Speed was great at cheering me up. He helped me catch up with my work and make friends. It felt great. But one day after I'd been to Claire's house, I came home and my mum was crying. She said she just banged her arm and bruised it. I hugged her tight and told her she'd be alright. She had hurt her face too. It didn't cross my mind what might be going on until I went to bed. Just as I fell asleep, I understood that my dad, the same squeaky duckling, imaginary games, laughing, smiling dad that I had loved with all my heart, right up until the point in the change, could be hurting my mother. I was afraid to leave my mum in the morning, so I started coughing like crazy. She tucked me up on the sofa. I pretended to be asleep and heard my dad shouting at my mum to try not to let him wake me, which made him shout more. I opened my eyes in time to see him hit mum and leave. My body froze as soon as the door closed, I rushed to my mum's side. The next day, when he came back, he was all lovey-dovey looking for forgiveness. I expected mum to just turn him right away, but she let him in. He still lives with us now. He's been nice so far. He'll snap any second now. Type in your worry. I'm starting to get spots. After all, there's some things you don't want people to know. No, that was the end of it. That's the end of it. Right. I just need to say something here. If any of you who are watching are actually pups, listen to me closely now. If your parents are having cases of domestic abuse, please, for the love of God, call somebody for help. Do not, do not just wait for things to go away because because they won't. It's only going to escalate until things get so out of hand that you might as well just run. But don't do that. You stick with your family. And whenever you see something like that, call somebody for the love of all that's holy. You agree here, don't you, Dom? Yes. Now, this is the part of the video which both I and Connor both agreed was a very good idea. This is where From the Bottle came from. Now, the thing about From the Bottle is, not only are we reading out these stories and giving our opinions on them, which we will do in a right. second, but we are also yes. sharing what we would do if we was in said person's situation. Wait, Dom, I think I get it now. The title, From the Bottle. It's an analogy. Well, like, no, because it... Don't... Wait, like, just hear me out here. Don't bottle your, your, uh, your emotions back. Your, uh, your emotions up. It's an analogy to that, isn't it? Uh, I I have no idea. I, I got it from I got it from uh, the phrase "tales from the bottle," which means it's uh it's a kind of uh, a turn of phrase meaning tales that no one really hears. Yeah. But like um. I'm just, I'm just gonna think of it that way, okay? Yeah. I mean, I think that's what uh, why it's such a good why I thought it was such a good name for the series because it is a tale from the bottle. It's a tale you don't really want to hear. Yeah, like you don't want to, but you know you have to. Well, well, okay, that was wrong choice of words. You you, you don't, don't want to, but to. you know it has it happens. That's the issue. Yeah, yeah. So here comes the next part of the video. <sighs> uh, our opinions on said story. You could kind of tell where it was heading from the start. Yeah. Which is the sad part. You knew where it was heading. Yeah. But in usually in these stories, you see things from the person who's being hit. You see it from her point of view. In this situation, you're not, which is what gives it an interesting spin. You're seeing it from the eyes of the child itself, and it's such a short story because it also envelops the fact that as a child, as a young person in general, you see this and you don't want to tell people that. You don't want people to know how bad it is for you. 
you want to stay strong for the people that you love which is even worse but that's just my take on things connor what's your take on this connor Yeah, but that, um, um, my take on things is, well, uh, Nishna Hwala. Check, check, what's in the dog, what's it more? Uh, there's it. Okay, Hwala. Um, sorry about that. Anyways, um, my take on it is, well, the story starts as you would expect any story considering family to start. Um, it's uh, it's all about the loving family, you know, playing games, and then one day something changes, and you need to like the father obviously didn't uh, he couldn't really accept the change, and I think that's what drove him to this point where he is now, and if I was in her shoes, obviously like once this happens, I would try. Like, I would desperately try to um, accept the change, but if I see something like that happen, like what he did to her mother, I would not hesitate to just spring into action. Now, here's another thing. What would you do in each of the characters' shoes? What? If I was the father, I would... Well, we're going to exclude the father from this, because obviously that was the issue. You can't all... Right, um... Um, just to let you know guys, on my part of the video, I will be right back, I just need to go eat my ice cream, because it came, but, but I can still talk, so, yeah, apologize for the lack of footage in the next couple of minutes, but ice cream awaits, <laughs> so, sorry about that, let's continue on. Yeah, so, in my, my first in the child's shoes, I'll do the exact same thing, I wouldn't be able to tell somebody about this because I would be more worried about my own mother's safety than telling someone about it because as you, everyone knows in these types of situations sometimes telling someone can put them in more danger well especially from the kids point of view which they want to protect their mother as much as they can if he's being nice at the moment then they want to keep that long lasting as long as they can and telling someone might make them snap in the mother's situation in the mother's so how situation, do you try, but how do you try to keep something from snapping if the if it can snap by acting like nothing's wrong? Moment? If you keep acting like nothing's wrong, then as I'm saying this from a child's point of view. Obviously, you know I'm right. I, I'm very recently 18, so I still have these childish views. Right. From the mother's perspective, again, it was the change of job that changed him, the husband. She probably still sees him as the man she fell in love with but that's is, the problem like that's what the issue with that's and, and what does he do now that well they that's don't say question. that's the that's the sa that's that they don't say the thing is though it's a classic thing of a lot of domestic violence relationships that comes to this sort of similar story where they were nice at first but now they're not she's known him for years and it's this is a very recent thing she thinks maybe he'll go back to normal at any point which maybe he will but you never know which is the major issue with this, and obviously the husband, he, he or the dad, he knew he done wrong, because he felt he ob he obviously felt really bad for, for it afterwards. But the thing is, he obviously it, 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 you hear it a lot in the story. He comes home from the pub, so he's obviously drunk. Yeah. So he might be one of those aggressive drunk drunkards. Which I'm not saying what he did is any more right, but when you're like drunk. You don't really have any control over your actions. Not trying to say what he did was right at all in this situation. It definitely wasn't. You no, know, it, it was not at all. But the fact that he's he know what he did wrong, and he instead of like just ignoring it, he's trying to get to fig, make forgive get, to make amends. Yeah, and he's trying to better himself because he see, said he's being nice at the moment. Apparently, he has, so that it also ensues that he hasn't been out drinking either. What about you, Connor? What would you do in each of the characters' situations? So if I was the child... Again... I am... Somewhat different from you. Whether you would just... 
try to act all natural, like nothing's going wrong. I couldn't do that. I literally couldn't do that. I see like one of my family uh, members get hurt, and I spring into action. Hmm. That's just me. It's just in my nature. But like, would... if you got to think about it from the aspect of a child, yes, Connor, you're a big strong man now, right? You'd probably jump out of your wheelchair, go fuck the pain in my legs. I'm gonna yeet this chair at him. <laughs> All right. Obviously, I'm gonna edit out joke there, but um. Connor is one of those people that will spring to action, but you got to think in the eyes of your child and you're a little girl. This is your dad, someone you, your hero. That's the thing. So you couldn't exactly spring to action and knock him out, especially because you're a child. So yes, you can, actually, how how would you spring to? Moment, in that moment, he is no longer your hero. You you grab a baseball bat, you you sneak up behind him, and and wham. To the back of the knees, and then to the head. Three blows. I mean, uh, I think telling someone would be better, honestly, instead of getting probably you, you and, and your mother put in prison. You? And who would believe you? I mean, you would just say to the police after this, that's I the was thing. defending my that's, mother. No, no, that's the thing. That's the thing. When it comes to, like, that uh, domestic violence, they will believe a child. Which is... They will, for one reason, one reason, because, as I said before, children are very highly valued uh, in any in in England specifically. Like before, uh, in England, you used to be able to throw a teacher used to be able to throw board rubbers at children children for being for being dicks. My my stepdad specifically uh, tells me of a time that his teacher picked him up by his ears because <laughs> he was being a sod. Mm. They can't do that no more because unlike back then, people actually give a shit about children. And you can tell How if someone's long until lying. Go back to the old ways, though. Ah, uh, I mean, I hope it doesn't. Honestly, it will. Uh, it will eventually. It will eventually. But I mean, teachers throw stuff at students anyway. Like it just happens. But they have to purposely miss now. They can't aim at you. And I feel bad for it because teachers throw stuff at me all the time. But they have to miss, otherwise they'll get fired. So props to the teachers for not giving in to their anger. But that's the thing. You could tell a teacher about what's going on at home, and then they'll ring the appropriate authorities to get him or you taken away to a safer place while they deal with the situation at home. Anyway, what would you do in the mother's situation, Connor? But wait, Dom. You know what could also happen? What? The teacher can call your parents in for a discussion, and then they'll say, Oh no, that uh, uh, they're just saying that to get attention. Uh, the, the thing is, um, <laughs> the thing is with that, Connor, is they wouldn't, if it was a domestic violence thing, they wouldn't call parents in to talk about it. Because of the simple fact that it is domestic violence and they don't want to risk endangering the child. Because think about it, how angry did the end of the story did the ga dad get when she was being told to be keep it down because the child was asleep? Mm. Anyways, people at home, this has been Tales from the Bottle. I'm now going to attempt to calm Connor down while reading a happy story from the same book that re ends with a good ending. I hope you ever wonder... Wait, but you also... Wait, but you asked me like... Uh, what would I do in, in the, the mother situation? Mother. Yeah, actually, yeah. Do, well, do that first. Like I said, like while everything is cool, cool, uh, cool and happy, everything would be fine. But as soon as, like, he does that in front of the girl, I wouldn't let him in. I'd be like, sorry, sir, but I do not know you. You are a stranger. You're not the man I fell in love with. Yes, exactly. Hmm. Right. So, anyways, that is goodbye from me and goodbye from Connor. I hope you enjoyed Tales from the, um, from the Bottle. Again, if you have any experience with this, tell someone you're not alone. And yeah. I usually give some nonsensical sh gibberish in outro, but I think it's not appropriate for this type of content. It really isn't.
if you want to read more of uh, this book, the Worry website, uh, you can probably just Google it. It's a, it's a Jacqueline Wilson book. It's not exactly going to be hard to find. Um, right. I do recommend this for younger readers as well because it can teach them things about <laughs> about le about later life and empathy as well. So on my end, that's goodbye from me and goodbye from Connor. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And again, you're not alone in this. Trust me. You re you really aren't. Goodbye.